January is National Blood Donor Month. This is an important one. It is. The Red Cross says the number of people donating blood dropped 40% over the last two decades. And sometimes it's patients who, who get caught in the middle. Kelly Koopman spoke with Isaac Williams, an eight-year-old from West Seattle. He credits blood donation for saving his life. Well, Isaac, thank you for talking with us today. Why don't we talk a little bit about um, what your, some of your health story. What do you remember about it? We're deferring to dad? I'm deferring <laughs> to my dad. So he was diagnosed with uh, high-risk neuroblastoma, stage four. Um, that was when he was 17 months old. So that was, I'll never forget, it was 2017 Easter. And he was laying on my mom's, kind of just, my mom was holding him. He, uh, he looked, you know, you can see the color of his skin now. He looked like super, super, all the color was gone from his body. And this is after he had been in the hospital, you know, like, I would say every week we took him to the hospital for fevers, maybe seven weeks in a row. But we ended up going back to the hospital to get blood work uh, and listen to his, it was his right side. That's where your scar is, right? They were um, listening to his right side, but they couldn't hear anything. What, it turned out to be a tumor that was blocking his the sound of his bowels from being able to hear them. Um, so he had a, a tumor in his adrenal gland, um, and it was neuroblastoma that we found out that he had. And yeah. no doubt um, you went through a pretty rigorous treatment, I would imagine. And it was pretty scary for me yeah. and my parents. Right. Yeah, there were moments where we were scared. It's, you know, obviously, in hindsight, I can say, thinking about what he went through, sure, it was scary. Um, you being a, a mom, if it happened to you, you probably you handle it just the way we did. You do whatever it takes to get your kid through that moment. My job was very simple. I just wanted to keep him happy, smiling, and not thinking about, you know, some of the drugs that were going through his lines to, to kill the cancer, because that stuff was, that stuff was not good. Um, that was probably the only time where I was actually scared, was after his second stem cell transplant, um, just looking at how he, he looked like that, that stereotypical kid in the, in the ad, right? Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, he looked like he could not, he could go, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the only moment where I was really scared. But then obviously, it's funny, like I remember going back to get blood regularly, and those were the things that were like bringing life back into him. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was tough, but we got through it. What would you say to those people who donated that blood and made that blood available to, as you say, bring that life back to you? I would say thank you because I had a 50 and 50% chance of not making it alive. As a recipient of blood, so I, I have seen the product go into him and literally bring him back or save his life. And if he didn't have that, he, you know, who knows what would have happened. And it's like, don't wait until you have a situation in your life that shows you the value of doing that or giving in general. Um, you know, it's okay to give in advance. Isaac is a fighter, isn't he? That yeah. smile. Yeah. Definitely a fighter. Um, I'm yeah. so glad that he's okay, and I'm glad some generous donors were able at the time to help out. But there's so many more kids going so through similar many. situations. People, he, yeah. adults, yeah. Um, everyone, you know, people get impacted by sicknesses all the time. And when we think about how there's such a, a low number of people that are donating right now, it's yeah. scary to think without donors' help, so like what could happen it could be Isaac's situation um I'm glad that he's okay though and yeah. he's so cute he is so cute what 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 a brave young kid mm -hmm. and I think we tend to think about blood donations you know when it when it comes to like an emergency type situation mm -hmm. but it's those everyday cases you know cases like Isaac where you know he's just trying to to stay alive as he battles such a serious health thing that People need those all the time, too, yeah. in those circumstances. And I was thinking back to this alert that we got from Bloodworks Northwest just yesterday about this code red that yes. they've launched because uh, the supplies have been in, like, an emergency level for, mm -hmm. like, four consecutive days. I mean, they have more than 23,000 open appointments through the end of February and just about 5,500 over the next week, week and a half alone. So if you're able to, and we know that not everybody can, can donate blood, but if you're able to pick up that phone, go to their website, make an appointment. I know I have one scheduled on February 2nd and it's scary because I haven't done it in a while. It's been uh, at least probably 10 or 15 years because there was the uh, ban that was in place on gay men donating. donating. That's now been lifted. 
Um, so I'll be doing that on February 2nd. Yeah, I'm a little scared because it's been a while, but it's a pretty easy process. You sit there for about an hour, you get your orange juice, your cookie afterwards, and <laughs> think about you could be saving a life just like Isaac's. Absolutely. So do it if you can.